Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Right, we are ready for the first season, first full season of uh, Event Collides. Uh, together with Mr. Bay RJ here next to me, and uh, we've got our floor manager, Disc Read Error, with us as well. He's here. Uh, together with uh, the rest of the team, which is uh, based uh, all over the world, we have uh, Chesser with us, we have Sutonia, Sir Squeebles, um, we have Chunky Lafunga going around, we have uh, our tech man, Dwygon, uh, Apothne, and Elise Randolph. And uh, in control of all the video uh, this evening is Mr. Biohazard, absolute hero, and doing all the hard work tonight. So uh, we're hoping to put on a really good show for you tonight. Um, we've got a couple of prizes to give out, which uh, we will go through in between the matches. And I'm um, going to hand over to uh, our co-host this evening, which is uh, Mr. Sir Squeebles. Hello, everyone. I'm Sir Squeebles. Uh, happy to be here. Today we have a best of five series, and we have Hard Knock Citizens versus shadow cartel so two teams that were in the alliance tournament 13 and put on excellent performances a lot of fun to watch um i'd like to get a couple of people uh other commentators who are in here to join in on this conversation about uh the setup this year briefly before we start into the first match so as uh as was mentioned this is a series best of five um, just these two teams today, each weekend will be betwixt two teams. Uh, the setups are posted, and hopefully somebody can post in the Twitch chat a link to the uh, NT Collides website. You can find a lot of information there. Detailed rule set, uh, ship point values, all sorts of good stuff. So definitely throughout the broadcast, if you find time, get that open, look through that, familiarize yourself with their setups. Um, we're not long off, actually, from this first match, so to avoid delay, I, I won't ask anybody else to chime in, but... Hard Knock Citizens versus Shadow Cartel coming up. Uh, we don't know which setups they will choose yet. There have been some bands already put in, if I can navigate through my multiple tabs. Excellent. So, uh, Shadow Cartel, each team has chosen seven setups ahead of time. Um, again, you can view those on the NT Collides website. I'm going to link that now in the Twitch chat for you guys so you can see what I'm seeing. There you go. So uh, unlike uh, the bigger tournaments like um, the Alliance tournament, the setups had to be chosen beforehand, which adds a layer of depth that we're going to be talking about throughout the broadcast today. You can see that uh, each team had to submit seven setups. Two of those setups were bannable by the other team, so a couple of those have lines drawn through them. The other five setups are all fieldable in these matches today. Um, check those out. I'm excited to see what they field. In the beginning, I think that the, there's a huge metagame behind that, and I know there are several commentators who will be happy to go into a little more detail on that. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, we're about ready. So uh, yep. for this first match, we are going to have Chester and Elise Randolph commentating, both commentators from the Alliance Tournament 13, and uh, just really, really handsome guys. I'm into both of them. Uh, so without further ado, I will send it to the arena, and good luck to those guys. All right, thanks a lot, uh, Sir Squeebles. Quite a quite a handsome man yourself. So uh, at the moment, we've got the Shadow Cartel team. They will be in red on your screen, and the Hard Knocks team will be in blue. Uh, the setups they've chosen. I'll go over the uh, Hard Knocks setups real quick, or the Hard Knocks setups that they brought. They brought the uh, two Hecate, a Starday Coercer, and Oneros. So they have a uh, Tech Two Logi, a lot of Tech Three, or a fair amount of Tech Three Destroyers. And um, for Lynx, they brought their Astarte. Uh, Shadow Cartel, kind of similar. They brought a Double Confessor and an Augur, Tech One Logi, and Absolution for Lynx. Um, but they threw a Blackbird in for, for quite a lot of jams. Blackbird is a great force multiplier uh, in this type of format. It's it's certainly an interesting choice to bring a Blackbird and Augur over an Oneros. You know, let's talk about that point distribution later. Uh, yeah, I mean. Maybe this is one of the setups that they just uh, threw out there to uh, try and scare people out and kind of bait a band, but this setup did not get banned at all. The uh, teams, the setups that got banned for the Hard Knocks team were, uh, was a Slepnir team and a Northrus team, quite strong. But uh, as you can see, the angles that these teams worked in at, I think they'll be quite happy with it. It's not perfect, but it's uh, just about as far, just about the positioning that they would have wanted. Yeah, I think I think it's going to be okay. I think. Uh... 
on the sides of who came out on top, I think Hard Knocks kind of came out on top here because their own Euros is well off the enemy team behind uh, their armor setup, you know, Chorus or Double Hakate, Starte. The Shadow Cartel team, again, coming in at kind of its like 45 degree angle from them, they have Absolution most likely beam fit, uh, sitting back with their Blackbird Augur. So, you know, I mean, for the most part, they have their brawling ships up front. You know, I think it's going to be really interesting to see if the Augur is going to be able to live longer and the usefulness of the Blackbird is going to be able to come through here just because um, it's a huge gamble, I think, to go with a jamming setup when you are faced with a lot of teams that have a lot of synergy as far as, you know, this almost basically pure Amar team here coming out of, sh of uh, excuse me, pure um, Galente team here coming from Hard Knocks. What do you think, Elise? Yeah, I mean, that's one way that you can avoid um, being vulnerable to, to ECM is just taking a single race team. So they have to choose, like the extra jammers that the Blackbirds have, they either have to gamble and skew their jammers to, to one race, or they have to just have unbonus jammers on a good amount of the ships. You know, uh, I still the... think it'll work out for them if they gambled right. If they said, you know what, I think the Oneros is going to be a problem. I'm going to just shove all Galente on there and see what happens. And I think they'll have an advantage. Uh, Elise, in this five man setup, you know, we see a lot of these double T3D with uh, a command ship types of setups. Do you think that bringing ECM is maybe an a liability just because you're dealing with a lot of high sensor strength ships and certainly with the prevalence of T3Ds here in this matchup and their sniper modes? Uh, do you think it's too much of a risk? Do you think that scaling down your T2 Lodgy in order to bring up a Blackbird is worth it in your opinion? Um, you have the Augur. It's an incredibly tanky ship. Uh, so I think that's... Hey, Bayer, can you hear me? I've just... I'm just moved out of channel. You need to set the other team blue. I think you got loads of pinks. Okay, you got it. Okay, cool. I'm just, I'm not, just let me know when you're, you're good to go and I'll start the countdown. You ready? Okay, cool. I'll start the countdown. I just think that it's very, very dangerous. You know, kind of as you were talking about earlier, you know, T3Ds in sniper mode for sure aren't going to be getting jammed so much. Uh, and then five man setups. You know, unless you go with a full all jamming team, you know, just having one jamming ship, I don't know how effective it's going to be. It's going to be interesting to see what kind of armor tank uh, they have fit on the Blackbird and if it's going to be able to hold up against potentially a very, very large amount of damage coming out of two Hakates, of uh, course, here in the start day. Yeah, these Hakates are going to be pumping out the damage. And uh, we had a few technical difficulties, but the match is going to start in a uh, couple seconds here. So. See, 30 seconds and they'll go down. So what do you think is going to happen? Do you think these confessors are going to be able to screen off the Hecates? Or do you think the do you think they're just going to be able to just charge through and go for this um, either Augur or Blackbird? Well, I think that the confessors do not want to get in a brawl with the Hecates. The Hecates are blaster fit uh, and the confessors are beam fit. So it's going to be really an interesting fight to see how these two are going to play. And that is going to be starting here in five seconds. And two, one, all right, we are going. This is going to be very, very exciting because right now Shadow Cartel is going to need to decide what they're going to be doing with the Sakate. And all we have Hard Knocks Hakates just burning. Are picking up massive amounts of speed right now. They're just charging straight through. They're trying to get to the back line of this, uh, where this Lodgy the Augur is, but it looks cool. like. Actually, they're, they're turning just... back. It looks like Lysias and both Hakates are content to just turn around right now, and I'm kind of unsure why. Lysias is taking a little bit of shield damage, but that shouldn't be too big of a deal. Uh, they're Oniero, surprisingly enough, taking a slight bit of shield damage, but it looks like Lysias is going to make it well within the safety range of the Oniero, so he should be okay. Yeah, so he, it's a matter of the Hakates charging and then saying, you know what, I immediately regret my decision. Let's just see how this plays out. Yeah, you know, Sharkai in his Confessor needs to be very, very careful right now. He's getting dangerously close to the Astarte, and I don't think that that's where you want to place one of your Confessors. I mean, they're MWD fit, and with no AB, it could potentially be a lot of damage incoming quickly on him. Actually, no, Astarte is just bypassing him and still burning to the back line. Yeah, this is, this is pretty intense. This uh, Hecate belonging to Lysias is actually going to go down. Do you think this, uh, do you think the Lodgy of Hard Knock Citizens is jammed out? Do you think the Blackbird got it? It certainly could be a possibility. Either way, though, the structure tank on Hecate is pretty immense. So as long as he can just pull into defense mode, he might have a chance. Oh, but, he oh dies. it just is not enough. I could not see any remote effects coming off of that uh, uh, Oneros. So, you know, you're right. With possibly targeted jams going on in that Oneros, there may be in absolutely no way that any of these Hecates are getting ruts right now, which means that all the points sunk in to this T2 Oneros are now going for nothing. Mac Kaut in his second Hecate is going down quickly as well. 
All right, so they got reps off, and uh, Hard Knocks has realized that, you know what, this Blackbird's going to be a problem, so they're shooting it right now. It has a pretty sturdy armor tank, though. It's holding just just fine. It looks like the Astarte now is bypassing the Blackbird, as, as well as Makut in his Hakate, and they are running straight for the Augurer. You know, it seems to me that Hard Knocks is having a difficult time deciding what they want to do in this match. Hakate's burning back and forth, bypassing Blackbirds, going for Augurers. This just doesn't seem to be a good throwing. Uh, yeah, and this Coercer has no idea what to do. He was way behind everything in the arena. He's charging in now um, towards Chris Elliott's auger. So at least now he's getting a little bit involved. And you're you're absolutely right. They're all just deciding to focus on the auger of Chris Elliott. But at the uh, same time, uh, the Hard Knocks Oneros is also taking a massive amount of damage. I mean, this is a 5v5, so the amount of damage that's coming out here is pretty intense. Yeah, it just it makes me really curious as to why two to three minutes into the match, we now start seeing people actually calling the right primaries instead of dancing around doing essentially nothing, where in that entire time, Shadow Cartel comes out well on top with one of the Hakates down on the Hard Knocks side. I just think it's pretty inexcusable. So the Hard Knocks Lodgy is pulling some range, and we can see Shadow Cartel now trying to shove some uh, tackle on it, but... Chris Elliott's auger is going down a little bit faster than the uh, Hard Knocks Oneros. So yeah, it just, looks like Hard Knocks is trade, going yeah. to have a leg up on this one. Yeah, oh, if they can kill the auger, okay. it'll be big. The question is, is, can the Oneros of Hard Knocks survive right now? He is the only thing keeping this team going, because if Hard Knocks loses the second Hecate, it is going to be in a world of hurt as far as uh, looking for DPS. Yeah, so um, the Hard Knocks Oneros is actually running around. He does have a medium rep. Fit and so he's tanking for a little while. He's got an ancillary rep. Um, they looks like the uh, Shadow Cartel team doesn't have any real webs or anything to hold him down. So he's just kind of moving around. Yeah, uh, you know, taking I, just I, like standard ammo damage. Like these confessors are shooting standard at him. Yeah, I'm really confused of what's going on here as far as the piloting is concerned. Hats off to Anisarius, who is right now in the Oneros, staying within web range, repping himself, and kiting out two Confessors. I don't understand how two Confessors are being outrun by an Oneros, even, with it, even without webs or scrams, but the piloting has been terrible here. The Oneros has pulled over 50 kilometers away from them, and now they're starting to reclose, but I think they've lost way too much time here. The oh, yeah, Blackbird on Shadow Cards. Oh, goodness. Exactly. So this will be a pretty good... Uh... Result here. If yep, Blackbird's, Blackbird's down. down. So wow. Oneros is wow. still holding on. Hard Knocks still have a Hecate and a Starde and a uh, co uh, Coercer, but they're about to lose their Lodgy. Though this Lodgy has been holding on for dear life for the last like two or three minutes. And he, now he is, he is the MVP for sure. Also, Gremek in the Confessor is now just pulled away randomly. I don't know why he's he's full health. He's completely lost chase on the Oneros again. They're Confessors are separated. Shikari right now is being crushed by a Coercer, a uh, Hecate, and an Astarte. You know, this almost reminds me of a game of League where just a team groups together and just walks around to each lane and just, like, ganks them because the misplays right now on Shadow Cartel's side are immense. Yeah, it uh, looks like uh, Shikari did get pulled off by this, um, by Macquart's uh, Hecate. So Confessor being tackled, a Blaster Hecate, as you said in the beginning. Not a matchup they want to see. And Asaris' Oneros is still alive this whole time. He's yeah, like... you know, this is, this is hilarious. Shadow Cartel, I think their Absolution doesn't have a prop mod, because I haven't seen him move at all. He's attempting <laughs> to use beam lasers to kill this very low sig Oneros, which is still alive. And that, on, that Absolution is sitting around doing nothing. I, I, I'm trying to figure out if they have a prop oh, mod on that or not. Oh, he finally dies. He finally, finally dies. This Goodness. is incredible. But um, Gremic's Confessor looks like he's tackled pretty well. And so I mean, it's, oh, it's Confessor versus uh, Hikate. Let's see what happens here. They're both going down about the same rate. Uh, I think I think Hikate totally has this, no question. I'd agree with you, but uh, there are some rep drones still on the field, uh, still moving around for the Shadow Cartel side. So, okay, yeah, nope, that didn't matter. So <laughs> yeah, this is, this is incredible to me. I don't see any prop mod on the Absolution at all. I... I can't even I can't even put into words how much that surprises me from a team uh, like Shadow Cartel that should know better than that. Uh, the fact that this Absolution essentially has been a stationary turret attempting to hit ships and provide links and has done nothing else all game is what caused them to lose the match because the Astarte of Hoodie Mafia on Hard Knocks 
has been up front, calling the shots, getting in there with the damage. And this Absolution has been sitting around waiting to die. And now that Hakate is underneath its guns, this is going to be a slow, painful death. This is unbelievable to me. Yeah, it was um, a little bit dicey at first for a Hard Knocks team. You saw the Hakates charge in, then immediately about face. Um, but it just shows you that they, they had a kind of a clear plan, and they had like a plan B as well. So if plan A did not work, they uh, they didn't stick to it to their detriment at all. They just kept going. Really, really good, solid win by Hard Knocks. I don't think this was a setup advantage. I think this was just a clear piloting advantage. So the, oh, yeah, the uh, no, Shadow Cartel no team just got outplayed. Yeah, no question. The Shadow Cartel piloting, I, I, I'm not going to lie, piloting on both sides is a little iffy, but the Shadow Cartel piloting was just a level that is really, really low. It's something I was not expecting from them at all. You know, I have to give it to the Hard Knocks team. Um, they finally got everything together, at least called their primaries correctly, got damage on target, while I have no idea what Shadow Cartel were doing with their Confessor setups. They didn't have any webs, they didn't have any scrams, they had TDs, which I guess are nice, but they had no way to peel anything off of their very, very vulnerable Blackbird and Augur. I mean, at least certainly when you're putting a team together, that has to come into your thought. Uh, absolutely. I mean, the thing I could think of is Shadow Cartel had their, their uh, setup sort of tailored to fight something else like maybe they just did not expect this one particular matchup certainly a probability well, that uh hard knocks can no longer bring their double hakate setup um do you think that shadow cartel would try to bring this very strange absolution fit back i mean just the immobility with the blackbird absolution uh along with no way to peel or to tackle with the confessors really just leaves me thinking that this has to be a very very huge oversight in this setup at all i wouldn't want to bring it back yeah i definitely wouldn't want to bring a, a non-prop mod ship back i mean i guess as we're watching the last absolution die and kind of like slagging all over <laughs> shadow cartel i guess they just had an idea but it did not pan out it didn't go sometimes you can eft something and it doesn't work the way you think it does uh I, I, I don't know. I have no idea what to make of that match. But Hard Knocks wins. Pretty convincing fashion. Yeah, Very I agree. good piloting toward the end. Uh, really good decision making. I cannot disagree with that assessment at all. Sounds good. And I think with that, we'll send it back to the, uh, to the desk. The new high-performance Rig 500 headset from Plantronics is designed to match the skills of an aspiring eSport player with the gear they need to win. The new modular system gives you the power to adapt, upgrade, and personalize your headset for the task at hand. The Rig 500 series of gaming headsets are engineered to deliver the perfect combination of durable lightweight comfort in an immersive audio environment. 7.1 surround sound and 24-bit audio provide a stunning 360-degree sound field with directional audio. 40mm drivers with low-frequency resonators provide crisp highs and boosted bass. Clear voice noise-canceling technology provides clear communication to your teammates. From the headset company that equips the pros, the 500 series was crafted to meet the needs of esports and competitive players around the world. The new Rig 500 series of headsets from Plantronics. Respect the training. Reactions win.
instruments are not something that have had incredible visibility outside of Worlds Collide. So there's a whole lot of intricacies to any EVE tournament. PvP in a bottle is, is a huge challenge. Definitely want to dig into the differences between a, a bigger tournament that probably a lot of the viewership saw in the Alliance tournament and something like this that is um, equally complex, but in a different way. These smaller teams, I think, offer a whole lot of things to think about that uh, even other experienced tournament players have not gone through uh, because these 5v5s are just now really picking up, especially with this season, seeing a lot of, uh, of high-level teams and a lot of cool stuff coming out. Um, with that, first and foremost, let's talk about ops in that first match. Again, each team had to submit seven compositions prior to the tournament. Uh, two of them were banned uh, on each side, so they're left with only five possible comps to bring. And uh, there's a lot of metagame there, but uh, maybe Apopni, touch on those two comps. What were they made to do, and you know what would have happened if they got exactly what they wanted with those comps? So, for our friends watching who are new to EVNT, for the past matches before the season we saw the Tuskers who were absolutely dominant bring in this archetypal se archetypal setup where you have a command ship, a T2 Logi, two Tech 3 destroyers and then a utility frig like a Maulus or a Griffin and that setup is so strong you have the full T2 resist line and the frig that can just run around the arena you take great advantage of the wrist resists you've got a lot of DPS and it's just a really really strong setup I feel like the teams here took heavy inspiration from this but I think they both did variants that aren't quite as good as the core Tuskers team we saw um uh, HK use a coercer instead of the more kind of useful, I would say, uh, Ewar Frig or something. It gives you a bit more DPS, but I feel like, uh, you know, the Dance or maybe the Jams Frig might be a bit more useful. However, there, a starter command ship was fit out correctly. It could burn on, it can get some damage in, it's got a great local tank in addition to the reps from the Aeneros. Um, the Shadow Cartel team took a bit of a gamble, I'd say. They took some points from using a T2 Logi, took it down to the Org, and used that in a Blackbird. I feel like it would be more survivable to change the Blackbird to the Griffin, as we see before, and then have the full T2 Guardian. Also, because they didn't have an MWD on the Abso, it meant they lost a ton of damage from their team. So damage from that team is two Confessors and a Command Ship. If you take the Command Ship DPS away from that, and you're having relying on a no-prop, Beam Absolution, it'll get some DPS on, but if you compare that with the close-up damage of an Abso or a Slipnir, you are really, really losing out. That's one of the reasons why the uh, Aeneas took so long to die, because it was just the uh, Absolution shooting it with beams, with, as Chester said, awful sig, whilst the Confessor was being screened and killed by the Hecates, who when you get down to brawling, blast the Hecates in a beat beam from Confessors every single time. And we uh, we heard a lot of the, the piloting and decision play in as well. Um, the commentators, Chester and Elise, both touched on the fact that they thought um, piloting really decided that match. So I'd like to talk about, especially in the beginning, it seemed like, obviously, if in a first of a series of five matches, um, both teams are still trying to feel each other out. These pilots are not new to EVE. They're not new to tournament settings for the most part. Um, so we saw those Hikades commit early and burn straight in for the tackle and then pull back. And uh, that's something I found interesting and definitely something you talked about. So Chester, at least either one of you guys want to break down sort of the, the core decisions of the match from a piloting perspective. I mean, at least do you mind if I go first? All right, go for it. Uh, I mean, when I, when I look at a setup like that, when I see these really, really high DPS ships like the Hakate and the Astarte, I really question the uh, use of the... Um, the their their last uh coercer that they threw on the end i think that that's a really terrible terrible pick but when i look at a comp like that you know you just want to get your face melting dps on as fast as possible and the confessors didn't have any tackle and kate in some cases might be slightly faster than a confessor if you can get the jump on him with speed mode and just like get a web on something i would have been been burning straight for like really high priority ships the Blackbird, the Augur, right away. I wouldn't have cared about the Confessors. I wouldn't have cared about any of that at all. I think where Hard Knocks were originally ran into trouble is when they were back and forth about it. They didn't have a clear plan. You know, They both split off in different directions, and they had an open opportunity to go to one of those squishy backline targets, and they didn't take it. And I think that that's what made the match as close as it was. To bring it back, though, the Oniero's uh, pilot on Hard Knocks is a hero, an absolute hero for staying alive as long as he did, because they did end up trying to go for a Logi trade at about three minutes in. And the fact that he could stay alive just is a testament to how good of a pilot he actually is. But at the same time, 
it's also a testament to how bad Shadow Cartel's piloting is and how bad their setup was because a no prop mods ship uh, is terrible. And the fact that two confessors couldn't stay on in Oniros and apply full damage with Gleam or multi frequency is absolutely incredible to me. It's such a poor misplay. Elise, what did you take away from that? Uh, kind of I mean, not as harsh, obviously, but <laughs> uh, I kind of agree with you. It, it looked in the beginning, as it, and it is hard to see from this perspective as well. The uh, Hard Knock Sakates, it looks like they wanted to charge in on the Shadow Cartel uh, Augur. And, or Blackbird, one of the two targets. But um, it, their own Lodgy appears that appear to have gotten jammed on the, like, the first jam cycle. So I think that's why we saw them charging in and then immediately about facing. And then one of the uh, Hecates was like just dead right, right, dead to rights right there. But after the jam cycle uh, sort of was over and that threat was gone, I thought they acted really, really well, and they acted as a unit. They sent the um, a start eight first to be the heavy tackle, and Shadow Cartel had no means to either outrun it or screen it off. So you just have this massive uh, DPS from a blaster of start eight just charging right at you, and you can't stop it. You can't do anything to it. And I thought that was a little bit questionable from the uh, Shadow Cartel setup. Uh, we saw that they had tracking disruptors on the confessors, which Kind of neat. Blasters don't really care about it, though. Uh, Absolution just just sat there and did nothing, which was weird. To move on from uh, that last point, actually, it's interesting that you mentioned the Astarte brawling right in. Uh, for those not too familiar with the NT Collides rules, again, you can look that up. I'd prefer uh, one of our mods, hopefully, will link that rule set in the Twitch chat so you guys can pull it up. But uh, in these comps, a ship can only be used in one comp. So again, I'm going to repeat this over and over and over for these first few matches, that you have to submit your compositions at a time. You have to submit seven compositions. Um, this is Starday, which played a huge role here, uh, can only be used in this composition. So now that that Astarte has been played uh, and that match has been won with that composition, it can't be used anymore. Uh, and that was uh, something I definitely wanted to throw back at the commentators for that match and, and the commentators who were on the sidelines. Um, how do you play this? I mean, what's the psychology? Do you have a? Do you play your strong comps early to try and secure those points if you think you have a really good armor core like this is start eight team, or do you hold back a little bit? Do you put out a, a sort of general purpose composition and um, see how the enemy counters? You know, I think it's a double-edged sword. If you can put one of your weaker setups up and then they happen to play their best setup and you can waste a weak setup on getting their best setup just out of the way for sure, I mean, that's a really nice card to play. I think it's a riskier route. And as the tournament starts getting into like, you know, match three, if it goes off or match four, even worse or five, your ability to select different compositions really, really falls off. And it just kind of leans back into how successful you were in earlier matches but at the same time how deep is your theory craft how deep is your setup in total because you can't just have you know two and then just hope to get lucky at the end because then you can get closed out at the end so i really like the added depth that this you know post setups beforehand you know back and forth type of matchup has yeah i would definitely not field my best team first right because you kind of want to keep that uh for later and you don't want to have it eliminated straight off i just take a, a good well-rounded setup first see what the other team brings, and then uh, just have more options later. Yeah, absolutely makes sense. And I would argue that that Astarte might have been in that comfort zone uh, for the Hard Knocks team. But uh, again, they well, their comps are public. So there's definitely, uh, we talk a lot uh, inside and outside of tournament settings about the meta game of EVE. So I think it's really awesome to see. But I do want to clarify, just so again, anybody not familiar with the rules is, is uh, very clear on this. You can field uh, any of the comps that are not banned, but if you win with that comp, you can no longer field it. So the Absolution uh, composition on the Shadow Cartel side, they can use again if they choose. Um, we'll see if that comes up in future matches, but the Astarte comp on the Hard Knock side cannot be fielded again because it won a match. So they're now down to only four comps to select, which um, if your theory crafting is not too varied, I would think could maybe bottleneck you a little bit. Apophony, what, what happens if you end up with only two comps left uh, that you can field. I mean, obviously, you you cannot afford in this format to only have two good teams. If the rest of what you have is garbage, a team who maybe they don't have the best super strong teams, but if they spend 
some practice time on all of their teams, then they've got at least seven solid comps, comps that can win games. If you put all your testing into two comps and you just really fine tune it and you really make it great, great, you get two wins, but you need three. Gotcha. So, I mean, that, that sort of plays into uh, what Elise has talked about and that if you play that strong comp early, you potentially leave yourself with two of the comps you're least comfortable with later in the series. So definitely keep an eye on, uh, I, I know I, before all of this, I talked over with a lot of my court mates, sort of the comps we thought were the best. We ranked them and, and compared. Definitely going to be interesting to see which of those comps makes it all the way to the end of this series. And I tend to agree with the ideology that, that you keep what you're most comfortable with for last. Um, that being said, hate to break with the, the feedback here. A lot of good discussion, but I am going to throw it back to Nash, who uh, maybe has some stuff he wants to give out. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for... Uh... Your commentary there, guys. Very interesting. Very good stuff. Um, just before uh, Bay lets me know that all the teams are ready, we have some stuff to give out tonight as well. So, uh, like I said, uh, uh, we've got a lot of uh, really good sponsors, very helpful guys on board that uh, uh, make this all possible and allow us to put a lot of time into this. Um, none more so than uh, EveBet everybody's uh, favorite Eve gambling website. And, uh, they have donated um, several billion isk in prizes to us that we can give away uh, that can be used as gambling on their website um, this will be paid out to you retrospectively uh, but uh, we will do uh, a first little handout here now how this is going to work I'm gonna ask you a question uh, and the answer needs to be given on the twitch stream itself okay so you can just type the answer um, in the um, the twitch chat itself so the question for this first one, uh, and we will pick, uh, sorry, uh, Dwygon, our tech boy, has written a wonderful tool that will pick 10 random correct answers. Um, so those people will be contacted after and will be sent the 100 billion isk each, sorry, 100 million isk each. Um, 100 billion? <laughs> Shit, man, we're in the wrong business here. Uh, uh, so the first question then, and you can type the answer in uh, the Twitch channel. Uh, the question is... What month was the last live event? So the question is, what month was the last live event? Uh, you can start typing away. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, looking at Bay, uh, the boys are ready. So uh, I'll uh, leave it to you to hand over to the commentating booth. Okay, we should have Suetonia and Elise Randolph, uh, I believe, uh, on this one. Hello. So the teams have are in the arena right now. For Shadow Cartel, we have uh, two Inquisitors, Hyena, and two Typhoon Fleet issues. This is a setup that seems very similar to what was flown in the uh, EVE Alliance tournament. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's a really cool set of setups here. I mean... What the TFIs are doing here is um, it's a setup that's just really, really strong in this format. Because if you imagine the raw DPS of rapid, heavy, Typhoon Fleet issues, just two of them, against just a five-man team, against the Vigi with an MWD on, against the Brutix Navy, it is going to melt them so quickly. And if you get those big ships off the field so quickly, then you have such an advantage going to the rest of the game. You've got the Hyena for paints and webs to help them control, to help them apply, and then the Inquisitors for some sustain. We've got the Hard Knocks team here with the Brutix Navy, the Vigi, the Augur, the Confessor, the Sentinel. I feel like this team is a bit of a mix mash. It's possible that their synergy is going to be great, but I just am not feeling it as much as I am the Shadow Cartel team. What well, do you think, Sidonia? Yeah, I, I kind of feel like this is kind of the wrong team to what Shadow Cartel has brought. I mean, the Vigilant is exceptional at killing uh, fast frigates, and maybe it will be able to punish those Inquisitors if they can get through the Hyena. But against this uh, Sentinel with the energy neutralizers and pr potentially tracking disruptors is probably not going to be the best uh, against these Typhoon fleet issues, which don't need cap to run any uh, uh, missile launchers, and they're probably going to have a decent-sized buffer too. 
Yeah, I mean, the Brutix Navy in the Vigie have come at 20, the TFIs have come at 30. Oh, the that match is about to go oh, now. Oh, here we go, we go on. Let's see what the first primary of the TFIs, what they bring their heavy missiles to bear on. It looks like they're still locking up. We've got drones being Hard dropped from the Vigie, they've got from ECM drones. So the Hyena of Grim K sort of whizzing by, trying to snuff some targets, I believe, to, to, to prevent that Vigilant from getting on top of those Inquisitors, most likely. The uh, the Confessor and the Sentinel uh, from Hard Knocks are just flying into the back line. Uh, Augur are taking a lot of damage now from Hard Knocks. Well, it seems like uh, uh, Hard Knocks are primering a Typhoon Fleet issue of Shadow Cartel because it's in half shields. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting choice going for that Augur. I'm pretty sure they could have broken the Vigi or the Brutix Navy to get that DPS to reps, but that Augur is going down so fast. you just got to hope they've got enough cycles left to kill a Brutix Navy or a Vigi before they need to go on reload. Otherwise, they're really going to struggle with all that DPS to keep that first tier fire alive. Yeah, Hyena taking some damage now, but it's probably armor tanked, uh, being that there's two Inquisitors on this side. Augur uh, down. Augur down already. This hyena is probably going to uh, really punish this Brutix Navy issue and Vigilant from getting on top of ships. It looks like the Brutix Navy issue is on top of one of the Typhoon Fleet issues, but the, for the Vigilant is independently going after the hyena of Grem K. Yeah, I mean, the Sentinel here taking damage. The tier 5, the editor taking a lot of damage. Whoa, the hyena is suddenly going, bursting through armor. It's been tackled. It's being hit. It's going down very, very quickly. The tier 5 trying to hold reps with that AAR, but it's not going to last long. The Sentinel going down. I have to say, I'm really, really surprised that the tier 5s aren't trying to kill this Brutix Navy or the Vigi. They are the main threats to the tier 5s. Once they are down, the tier 5s are safe, even that Lodi. Inquisitor is doing a great job just keeping that tier 5 up. The hyena barely surviving, repping through, but just. Is it hard tackle? I can't quite see yet. It has got a Vigilant right on top of it. I'm amazed that Hyena has lasted for so long. Yeah, I would have expected the Vigilant to just completely shred that Hyena. It doesn't have much base hit points, even if it does have uh, two Inquisitors repping it. One of the Inquisitors now taking quite a lot of damage. Um, one of the Typhoon Fleet is used to sitting in half armor, but he's boosting up. It looks like he does have an artillery on top of the Lodgy helping him out. Lysus yeah. and the Confessor taking damage now. Yeah, the TFIs have finished their relight cycle, they've muted out this Confessor, they're trying to take it down. Again, really, primary choices I wouldn't expect, but currently they are winning the match, so you can't hold it that much against them. The TFI of the Arafello repping back up, the Inquisitor is doing a good job keeping them up, the Confessor now going down into... Brutix Navy is issue of Hoodie Man is flying away for some reason, I'm not sure what he's doing. Yeah, I'm not sure how it's going to apply, if it's Blaster Fit from far away, I'll do a quick shit scan. Let's see what it's fit at. It is blaster fit, so it is going to be doing nothing from that range, but it's drones. It looks like Shadow Cartel have again brought armor repair bots as they did in the last match. They're trying to go for that sustain rather than the ECM drones of Hard Knocks, <coughs> excuse me, which tend to just try and jam at the enemy, try and disrupt what they're doing. It's a very interesting set matchup of drone choice, because remember, in this format, you can only bring T1 drones. That means your rep drones and your damage drones are at disadvantage but your actual drones, but your ECM drones are still the fat same. Yeah, and we saw that hero logi from the previous match. But it looks like this is this time it's a hero hyena that's just holding down these uh, big ships like Vigilant and Brutix Navy and just stopping it from getting to where it wants to get to. He did get tackled initially. I guess that's probably a combination of the Sentinel uh, muting him out and allowing the Vigilant to get on top of him. Yeah, I mean... he's he's been doing a lot of work this match. Yeah, I mean, you know, the clear victory here for Shadow Cartel, um, really well played, uh, I think quite a bit better flown, but I'm still really interested to hear what the other commentators and Hoodie analysts Nassi think. has uh, warped out of the arena. <laughs> I'm really interested to hear what the other commentators think of the primary choices of the TFIs. I guess with that, we'll send it after some ads back to the desk. The new, high-performance RIG 500 headset from Plantronics is designed to match the skills of an aspiring eSport player with the gear they need to win. 
the new modular system gives you the power to adapt, upgrade, and personalize your headset for the task at hand. The RIG 500 series of gaming headsets are engineered to deliver the perfect combination of durable lightweight comfort in an immersive audio environment. 7.1 surround sound and 24-bit audio provide a stunning 360-degree sound field with directional audio. 40mm drivers with low-frequency resonators provide crisp highs and boosted bass. Clear voice noise-canceling technology provides clear communication to your teammates. From the headset company that equips the pros, the 500 series was crafted to meet the needs of esports and competitive players around the world. The new RIG 500 series of headsets from Plantronics. Respect the training. Reactions win. And we're back. Right on, right on. Uh, that was uh, exciting. A very clean uh, victory there. I'm sure the boys have got lots to say about that. Uh, before I'm going to hand you back over to Sir Squeebles, uh, we have another uh, question and a handout. Uh, so another 10 winners uh, of 100 million ISK apiece of Eve Bet credit. And uh, Dwagon, if you're ready, uh, you can start the bots. The question will be, who is the leader of Shadow Cartel, and uh, you may type your answers in Twitch chat. And the question again is, who is the leader of Shadow Cartel? This should be a good one. Uh, the answer is not Paquito, uh, just in case you were thinking it could be Paquito. It's not. It's not. It's not the answer. Um, quick shout out as well. Um, obviously, we've got uh, a, a really big team uh, working with us trying to make this all work, and uh, um, everything is run slightly different than last season. So. Um, you know, I think I think we're doing a really good job. Actually, everybody's uh, slightly sweaty in the HQ. That's for sure. It's uh, it's like a, a big sweaty nerd pit around here. It's horrible. Um, but uh, <laughs> I want to quick give a quick shout out to uh, CCB Logibro, who's uh, helping us out uh, today. He's doing all the moving and all the magic, and he's uh, you know on the CCP side making all this work for us. So a uh, quick shout out for him. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, I'm gonna hand it over to Mr. Sir Squeebles. Thank you very much, and yeah, uh, big thanks to uh, you guys who are hosting as well for suffering through that sweaty, nerdy, just awfulness. It's like Vietnam in there, I'm sure. <laughs> but uh, with that said, I'd actually like to go through uh, the other guys who are commentating. Obviously, I'm Sir Squeebles. I'm from uh, You Heard slash the We Heard Initiative, streamer, somewhat participant of uh, various tournaments, commentator on the AT13. Uh, how about the other guys? I'll just stop or start from the top down. Uh, Popney. Hey, I'm Apophany. Um, I'm uh, AT commentator from 12 and 13. I write for CZ. I'm a member of Sniggerly and PL. Thank you very much. Chesser. Uh, hi, guys. I'm Chesser. I do PDP. Um, I make videos. I was an AT commentator, and I am part of Mining Industry Exile Foundation. And the proud owner of a jumpsuit that occasionally gets used for instructional videos. Uh, Elise Randolph, what about you? Hello, I'm Elise Randolph, also from the uh, Alliance Tournament Commentating Team for 12 and 13, and I'm a Pandemic Legion FC. Ah, doubtful. Uh, how about Suetonia? Uh, I'm Suetonia. I'm most known for making videos on the EVS Easy channel on YouTube, and I've also have taken part in many tournaments in EVE. Uh, and again, there are multiple uh, other people involved in this whole deal. Obviously, your hosts are putting in a ton of work, and there's been so much groundwork before even a lot of us commentators have walked into this. So huge thanks to those guys. Uh, keep doing what you do. Um, and there's some other guys on the side who maybe we'll, uh, we'll talk about a little bit later in the tournament. But there was a lot to talk about from that match, so I want to get right into it. Um, the breaks between these matches are almost as demanding on us as commentators as they are on the players, if I may be so bold, because there's so much to discuss. I want to start off first um, with something that, that really comes from the rule set. Uh, these rules take after, especially the Alliance Tournament 13, after we saw drone-heavy Alliance Tournament 12. There were some limitations put in place. Uh, Tech 2 damage drones were not allowed. 
Uh, however, Tech2 logistics drones were allowed. In this setting, uh, if I understand it correctly, only Tech1 logistics drones, only Tech1 damage drones, and no faction drones whatsoever. So does anybody want to pick up on sort of the importance of drone choices and maybe offer some input on, on where you think that bandwidth is best spent? Okay, so we're seeing a lot of uh, ECM drones and EWA drones in this format because uh, without Tech 2 Logi drones, without Tech 2 Combat drones, it seems like uh, ECM drones, especially Vespa 600s and EC 300s, which we've seen a full flight of in the two uh, previous matches, are very efficient. But at the same time, uh, other than trying to go for jams, which sometimes can be on and off, and essentially when you see a lot of these high ECM strength teams, uh, such as you know T3Ds, command ships. Uh, a lot of teams do actually go for a huge flight, well, provided you have the drone bay to do it, a huge flight of just Tech 1 armor maintenance spots or shield maintenance spots. And while their ability to rep DPS isn't immense, you know, over a long 10 minute match, provided you can keep them alive, they can make quite a bit of difference in the amount of EHP that some of your more stockier ships, such as battleships and command ships, can have. Yeah, well, it is and... worth, oh, sorry. It is worth pointing out that this is a 5v5 instead of a 12v12 in the Alliance tournament, so the DPS on the field is a lot lower than what you'd expect in the Alliance tournament, and Tech 2 from Tech 1 was would still be fine, I think. And... Uh, to sort of follow that discussion, uh, well, let's just talk about what we've seen so far. There's a lot of things that we can do in terms of predicting what teams are going to bring. I think as this, uh, this season of NT Collides moves on and we see multiple teams square up over a bunch of great series, we're going to have a better idea of where team's heads are at and what to expect and what to be surprised by. But this being the first weekend of the season uh, makes it pretty exciting. Um, and uh, right off the bat, Shadow Cartel in, in certain setups has opted for logistics drones, whereas Hard Knox has opted for ECM. Um, you guys have touched on that a little bit, ECM obviously being a gamble either in the mid-slot variety or in the drone variety. Um, logistics a little more solid, but without being able to use the Tech 2 Logi drones, a little bit different than, than some of the other, especially armor uh, drone tinker, if you will, setups that we've seen in the past. Although tinker, drone spider, excuse me. Um, moving on from that, uh, while we're in the, the same vein as logistics, uh, the logistics ships are available here, both in Tech 1 varieties and Tech 2 varieties. But the Tech 2 is going to cost you. We have 44 or 45 points, excuse me, um, to allocate per team of five people in terms of theory crafting. Do you plan the comp around a T2 logistics, or do you put that in after you've planned your core DPS? Where where does that process start if you're thinking up teams? So um, if you're using a T2 logi you only get four of them, right? And odds are, if your T2 Logi teams are good teams, you know, two of them can get banned. So what you want to do if you're using a T2 Logi, you want to get the most out of it. So typically you want a team that is going to have T2 resists. So you make the most out of those resists. So you get a really survivable team. As with the Tuskers archetype I mentioned earlier, that runs T2 resists. You've got the T2 Logi, the command ship with T2 resists, and also the T3 destroyers, which have very high resist profiles. Uh, yeah, anybody T else? I mean, uh, oh, well, sorry, yeah. sorry. Let me let me broaden the question a little bit. I apologize, and then you can go. Um, another question I'm really curious about from those of you that have tournament experience on the inside: Where do you start planning a composition? Uh, do you start with your core DPS? Do you start with your logistics? I mean, can you tie that into what you're going to say? Sure. Uh, you know, when you're looking at any setup and any type of tournament situation, especially in five man. You know, there's specific archetypes uh, that fit in a meta. So, for example, the Tusker is creating this glorious dual T3D command ship, Tech 2 Logi with, you know, a uh, spare point uh, type of setup is, is one. Another one that we're seeing here that was just run by Shadow Cartel, which is sinking all of your points into, you know, two battleships with slight support. And really the meta becomes of what really, really strong team comps like that can you make? And then the variations and what teams uh, in particular does better against the other teams. So like uh, last time we were here, we also saw an additional variation to that, which is like a double Vagabond, double Sleipnir uh, type of setup uh, with like a single shield Logi uh, and how that was faring against some of the T3D setups. Um, so like that's kind of how a setup works. Once you figure out, you know, hey, we're going to do two battleships, uh, then you just kind of think of are you going armor, shield, and other synergistic things that go along with it. But that's generally how the building blocks of a team comes together. 
Uh, and again, to that point, I mean, we are talking about a 5v5 tournament, whereas traditionally the tournaments have been a slightly larger uh, size outside of NT Collides or any of the Collides tournaments for that matter. Um, where do you allocate your points in terms of a, a battleship core is obviously extremely popular in something like the Alliance tournament. Um, this uh, Typhoon fleet issue team is extremely tanky top end. Um, is that something that you think that we're going to see in future series between other teams? Or do you think that that's sort of an oddity in terms of where somebody puts their points? I think that double battleship comp is actually pretty strong here in Eve NT. I think it crushes some setups and I think it loses miserably against others. Um, it's just, you know, you have to talk about like what comps are better against other comps. So like, for example, the hard knocks comp that they brought was probably very, very strong against the T3D setup because you have the 90% vigilant webs, you have the sentinels, which will absolutely destroy a T3D cap provided they can survive. And then they had, you know, highly mobile Brutix Navy issue on top of that. You know, that type of composition there, I'd be very scared to bring a T3D ship or composition into. But at the same time, their composition was heavy on points for taking down anti support, but lacking a lot uh, and desiring a lot when it came to like hard, heavier hit uh, ships like command ships and for battleships. You know, going without uh, links, going without, you know, really significant logic can hurt you. Gotcha. And it Again, to keep digging into this, there's so many questions I want to ask, and I'm trying to make sure that uh, that we have enough time to do it. The, the teams are setting up now, so it shouldn't be too long. Uh, we are on schedule now, so um, again, that schedule is, I believe, posted publicly. If not, it should only be a handful of minutes before we get into the next match in this best series of five, series of best of five, rather. Um, a lot of you guys in here, I mean, I, I think almost all of the commentary team has had some level of participation in a tournament in the past. Um, traditionally, again, I'm, I'm coming from a background where the primary tournament is the Alliance tournament. So I'm trying to frame it in that perspective, given how much visibility there is. But those are 12v12 matches. The idea of internal practices, you're talking about two dozen guys minimum, plus some substitutions, plus some additional sets of eyes to, to judge a match. Um, it, it's very, very intense. And you hear a lot of talk of that from Alliance tournament teams about the commitment, about the practice. How does that dynamic change if you're a pilot on a team in a 5v5 tournament? Are you still just as committed? Do you put in just as much time? Uh, and how is, how is an individual's op opinion uh, changed by not being one of 12, but instead by being one of five? Well, let's say that um, the Alliance Hornet at one point did have a, a six on six sort of early stage. So it's not uh, it's not something that these hardcore pilots are really uh, confused by or bewildered by. Uh, when you have a, a five on five, it just means you could have a lot more informal practices. You don't have to try hard as much, and um, I don't know. You still get like the cream of the crop of the people who actually like doing this. So I don't think it definitely doesn't dilute the quality at all. It just means you can test. Um, you just test more often, which is always a good thing. I think it, it allows teams to control variables much easier. You have less guys to worry, or less pilots to worry about. You have less people to get in place. So, you know, you can do a lot of the back end work on any side, either for 12v12 or 5v5. But 12v12, uh, when it just comes to the logistical problems of getting 24 people at least together compared to 10, it just makes it so much easier and a lot more palatable, I think, for people that are trying to get into more competitive type of PvP. And to that end, I mean, we see, obviously, with the, the limited number of entries in this tournament, we see very high tier teams. Um, a lot, again, a lot of overlap between the pilots involved in this tournament and other tournaments. Um, where do you start? If you're, if you're a team looking to, if you're watching this now and you're watching this season and you're thinking, man, this looks like a whole lot of fun, um, what do you do? I mean, do you involve yourself in a bigger group? Is this something approachable for younger players? Or just in brief, I mean, what makes a tournament, what takes a, a, a player and turns them from a non-tournament player to a tournament player? I think it's just the, the bug that you get when you play. It's a very different feeling than, um, than playing on TQ. And it's, EVE is one of those games where trying something different is really exciting. So I think it's just that sort of rush that you get. And obviously, there you, there's prizes you can win, and, and everyone likes winning prizes. Yeah, definitely with that. I think 
the types of pilots that like to tournament play are very uh, self-motivated pilots where they want to be quote unquote the best they want to improve their skills they want to you know show how good they are really at flying and you know as a new player that comes just starting out having the desire to pvp you know wanting to pvp and not getting in the bullshit of like kill mills or worrying about your kill board stats or you know all the other weird things that e-players do to avoid pvping or to hide behind you know uh self-imposed walls when it comes to pvping and just you know try and you know take it from a more purist standpoint yeah, I mean, definitely a culture involved around tournaments, and uh, obviously everybody here has had the benefit of, of being a part of that in some regard, and um, definitely that quarter eve mindset present, but uh, a, certain, a certain fanaticism uh, behind it, and, and a lot of passion by these players, so all of these teams that are competing in this season of NT Collides, best of luck to them, a lot of great pilots, a lot of people have put time in, and uh it's definitely fun to be a part of that culture. I encourage people who are, have not yet participated in an EVE tournament to try and involve themselves in that. Um, NT Collides is a great point for that. Um, and obviously a lot of different groups putting teams together. So we only have a, a couple of minutes. Teams are now on field, so we're definitely on schedule. Everything is looking good. Um, I'll be handing it over before too terribly long, but uh, let's talk maybe about predictions for the next match. It's always... Uh, I'm obviously notorious for being 100% wrong about uh, how a match is going to play out. But of the comps available to the teams, what do you what do you expect to see? And no cheating based on what's off field. I think Shadow Cartel took their strongest or one of their stronger teams in the TFI team that we just saw. And it looked really good. A lot of synergy with the Hyena Webs and the Hyena Painters. And they came up exactly against what they wanted to see, which was not really that many small ships that had just a, a single confessor on the hard knock side and a tech one logi that they could easily melt through with the typhoon fleet issue so i think we saw their best team uh maybe they'll take a little bit of a weaker one maybe they'll both take like a step back just to just to feel one another out um, I'm gonna I'm gonna interject there real quick, guys. Um, I I would love to hear more about your predictions, but I think we just uh, we're gonna get to it actually. Um, for the next match, actually, uh, we're going to have Sir Squeebles himself and uh, Suetonia uh, to commentate. So, Bio, uh, run the reel. All right, we are back for the third match in the uh, best of five series between Shadow Cartel and Hard Knocks. Um, I will cover the Shadow Cartel comp, which is made of two confessors, an auger, an absolution, and a blackbird. And I will cover the Hard Knocks team, which is Brutix, Navy Issue, Vigilant, Augra, and a confessor and a sentinel. Both of these setups we've seen before, and they both lost the match. Yeah, so I mean, we've already touched on the fact that this tournament you have to announce your comps before you come into it. Um, two comps are bannable by the other teams, so that puts you down to only five available compositions coming into this tournament. And not five compositions that you can keep under wraps, five compositions that you can put anywhere, really. Everybody already knows what they are. So the fact that both comps have lost and are coming back is kind of exciting in a way it, it expresses a level of comfort and i think maybe it plays into what elise randolph mentioned and that both teams appear to strategically be taking a step backwards i would say okay we understand how this comp works we understand how it played last time let's field it again and do better because we went into this third match being one win versus one win um we have a little bit of wiggle room admittedly not much but let's put something out there we've flown before and and see if we can improve on it um, who do you think has the upper hand between these two setups, though? Oh, the match has just started now. Um, I kind of like the uh, Hard Knocks team with the Vigilant now that there's two Confessors and a Blackbird and Augur on the field. Saying that, though, a Sentinel just got instantly alphaed into armor. Yeah, it is really interesting. I mean, the Sentinel as a support ship is a little bit of a gamble, but super effective in this match. Hard knocks are charging right into, uh, well, at least the support is charging right into the uh, Shadow Cartel side. 
Yeah, and uh, again, we are we're seeing, seeing vigilant uh, uh, webs on a uh, on a confessor right now. Yeah, nothing has gone down yet though, but a lot of damage coming out. Shikari and the confessor taking a whole lot of damage. Um, just through shields though, it looks like he swapped into defensive mode. If he wasn't already, that uh, armor bleed has slowed down a little bit, but it is still going. So uh, definitely catching reps. Nice job by the Lodgy of uh, Chris Elliott and the Augur, but. Uh, really, it's a confessor race at this point. It is Shikari versus Lysis. Who's better at not dying? And uh, right now, it looks like they're both pretty good at not dying. Yeah, the the Augur of Antithesis is actually staying quite quite well outside the fight. So he may end up being a hero lodge again. Saying that he's oh. in the half armor, but Lysis is taking Lysis. a lot of damage. Yeah, Lysis is really low. Uh, based on the fact, yeah, he's in structure now. Lysis should go down. That's one confessor down. Uh, really well done by Shadow Cartel. And at this point, obviously a one ship advantage. However, their Lodgy is taking a lot of damage. He's now in under a quarter armor. Uh, meanwhile, the Vigilant of Onavia is now taking damage. He's through shields. He still does have that Augur available for reps. They're within range of each other. Um, those reps are already coming out, so nice job. But the Augur of Chris Elliott, not fearing quite as well. He's slightly more unhappy than uh, good old Anariasis. Yeah, he's slowly going into a structure now, and he does have a Brutix Navy issue on top of him, so he's not long for this world. Yeah, and, and he's there gone. he goes. Um, meanwhile, Onavia in the Vigilant now in about uh, two-thirds armor, quickly approaching one half. But um, So the logistics for one team down, meanwhile some DPS on the other team down. I honestly, I favor Shadow Cartel at this point. I think they're in the stronger position. And again, that, that Blackbird, which can only fit those multi-spectral jams, uh, it only gets stronger every time a ship dies on the Hard Knock side. So uh, the Sentinel appears to be the new primary, taking some really good damage. And uh, hopefully the Augur of Anariasis is on the ball on this one. Shakari's really low now. Without the uh, Augur to help, help him up, he's taking a lot of damage. And he's gone. Yeah, I mean, no So this could swing back there. to Hard Knocks. Right. I mean, uh, the the Shadow Cartel team has decided not to go for that logistics hull, even though it's only a T1 cruiser, as uh, Elise alluded earlier. It uh, it definitely can fit some serious tanks, so no appreciable damage now being applied to Hard Knocks, whereas Shadow Cartel, about to lose Grim K and the other Confessor, he is getting chunked, lord. Yeah, we're really seeing what the Vigilant can do now against these uh, small uh, support ships. Uh, very interesting. Obviously, Vigilance most popular for gate camps. Now the Blackbird into half armor. Uh, definitely a good fight go has been called in local, so it looks like uh, Shadow Cartel are handing in the towel. Yep, and it does look like they might have forfeited here. We'll sit tight to see, but um, really nice swing by Hard Knocks there. I mean, um, we're obviously going to stay with this until it completely wraps up. It looks like it is just a matter of cleaning up the field. No fancy looting to be done without flagships. But Blackbird of uh, Dialga 11 going down. Uh, nice of him to erase another Blackbird, if only from the test server. Um, just the Absolution left now. A significant amount of tank, but not going to be able to pressure anything on the Hard Knock side. So, well flown. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I gave the early advantage to Shadow Cartel, and in typical fashion was uh, wrong to have done so. Yeah, I think the difference is definitely in the Logi. I think uh, uh, um, I'm gonna like completely butcher his name, but Anarisis uh, uh, kite was kiting really far out the uh, out the side. He had uh, superb positioning for the entire match, whereas the other one was unfortunately run down by a uh, BNI. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's it's strange. We saw a comp fielded of five different ships on the Hard Knock side, and um, you don't see that a whole lot, uh, typically, especially even in uh, to allude to TQ fleet comps. You don't try and cover all of your bases by having different ship, right? But a tournament setting is a completely different ballgame. Um, they're now chewing through this absolution of Titus. Thankfully, it's not the most exciting thing in all of esports, so um, we have the, the luxury of talking about this match more in depth. Um, nothing should be under any on the hard knock side as they clean this uh, absolution up, but the the entire idea of of having five completely different ships on grid doing somewhat different roles is really interesting because on the one hand it can emphasize the the hull and roll bonuses of, of each ship on the other hand it means everybody has to pilot almost individually there's no calls to say okay all brudixes get on this target uh, all webs on this target you have to allow people that independence 
that we see given to a lot of tournament pilots and, and high level piloting. And as I say, that that absolution goes down. Yeah, we talked a bit about uh, the comfort zone uh, earlier about bringing a setup that's already lost, but now uh, with Hard Knocks two up, if they win one more game, they've com they've t taken the whole series. So um, Shadow Cartel are definitely going to have to bring out their big guns now. Yep, and uh, with that, the match is over. So congratulations, Hard Knocks pulling ahead by one match in this series best of five. So they only need one more to close it out. Um, with that being said, we'll send it back to the uh, air quote studio. The new high-performance RIG 500 headset from Plantronics is designed to match the skills of an aspiring eSport player with the gear they need to win. The new modular system gives you the power to adapt, upgrade, and personalize your headset for the task at hand. The RIG 500 series of gaming headsets are engineered to deliver the perfect combination of durable lightweight comfort in an immersive audio environment. 7.1 surround sound and 24-bit audio provide a stunning 360-degree sound field with directional audio. 40mm drivers with low-frequency resonators provide crisp highs and boosted bass. Clear voice noise-canceling technology provides clear communication to your teammates. From the headset company that equips the pros, the 500 series was crafted to meet the needs of esports and competitive players around the world. The new RIG 500 series of headsets from Plantronics. Respect the training. Reactions win. And we're back. Right. That was uh, interesting. I thought that was going to swing one way, and it didn't. Uh, how disappointing. Um, good to... Good, that's, that was sad, man. Like, you know, that was, that was interesting, though. Uh, good to have everybody back. Um, I, I have uh, some more stuff to give out, actually. So we've got another question for you, which we'll uh, bang straight out. Uh, if you haven't placed any bets just yet, um, the bets keep uh, being updated on Eve Bets, so make sure you place some bets and uh, make yourself some monies. Uh, we have some wonderful assistants tonight with us that will be handing out the prizes as they come in, and you can use that credit straight away, actually. Um, so, uh, we have another question, and you can type the answer in Twitch chat. Uh, the question for our third prize draw will be the following. Get ready? Parallax patch will be released in what month? So, the new patch, uh, Parallax... Uh, when will this be released? In which month? So type the uh, actual month into Twitch chat. I have chat. no idea what the answer is. And neither do I. <laughs> does, does, <laughs> wait, does, does any of us actually month? know what the I hope somebody knows the answer. I, I'm sure somebody on the team will know the answer. We'll figure it out. The bot, right, yeah. will, know the the bot will know the answer. <laughs> Thank fuck. All right. Uh, cool. And with that, uh, I'm just going to squeeze you back over to Mr. Squeewells. Thank Squee you very much, Nash. Did you just say it's that was supposed to be my handoff. Babe. Go ahead. If you have Go on. All right. Thank you. Sorry. I'm, I am, I am Sorry, trying Bay. to run a show here, Bay. All right. Uh, on that note, <laughs> congratulations to Hard Knocks. They are now one up on the series. Uh, we were 1-1 one, one going into that. So, again, this is a best of five. Uh, they only need one more to close out the series. This next match, definitely going to be tense on both sides. Um, I offered my Twitter handle earlier. I'm going to very quickly review the questions sent to me, all of which are extremely serious and relevant to the tournament. Um, Yo Yo DK asks, why is Bay Bad uh, primarily interrupting but while they're trying to co host? I mean, that's among the top reasons. Uh, Ithaca Hawk asks, would you, rather fight, <laughs> would you rather fight 100 Chesser sized slicers or one slicer sized Chesser? Uh, 
slicers are really fucking big. I'm going to go with 100 Chester size slicers. Uh, after sizing him up in person at the AT13, I, uh, I think I could take him. 100 of him? Probably not, but uh, I think I could take him. Um, Mangala Solaris, welcome back, uh, says, Where would you take Apothne for the perfect first date? Probably a Sabaro in an airport. Preferably Newark, if there is a Sabaro in, in Newark. Um, and several other people have tweeted me things that uh, I can't read out loud. Uh, but thank you again. You can tweet me at Eves or Squeebles. I'm keeping an eye on that feed for any discussion points you want brought up to myself or the other commentators after the matches happen. That being said, um, we'll move right into discussing that match. Both teams, to cover the basics, both teams brought compositions they had fielded before and lost with. Um, I definitely would like to hear some feedback on that, but also uh, the the idea of bringing five completely different ships, maybe to just cover all of your bases, so to speak, versus bringing something like the Double Typhoon Fleet issue, which offers a little more um, simplicity, if not synergy, in the top end. I think that's a, a really interesting concept. So first and foremost, Elise, you talked about comfort earlier. What does it mean to bring a comp that you've already lost with? What, what's the mindset behind that? Well, there are certain teams that you fly a lot and you sort of can go on autopilot. And it looked like for match one and three, it looks like Hard Knocks knew exactly what they wanted to do. They flew their ships better. In the second match, I think the matchup favored Shadow Cartel much, much more heavily. So they kind of rolled the dice the second time, lost. But in uh, match one and three, Hard Knocks, they flew just better. They outpiloted uh, their opponents in Shadow Cartel. And uh, when you're flying a setup that you kind of like, I mean, as we can see, they have a lot of very similar setups, right? They have a Brutix Navy issue Vigilant team, which we just saw. Then we have the uh, Starday 2 Hecate teams, which sort of do similar things. We have these, like, blaster in-your-face high DPS teams. And, I mean, that's just the hard knock style, it seems, and it's working. And they have, uh, it should be noted, they have one double Brutix team left, so... I don't know if I'm if I'm Shadow Cartel, I have to take my absolute best team next, and I have to assume I'm going to see some Brutixes next. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you don't leave one match left on the line and uh, field a setup that you're not happy with. Um, I want to talk a little bit about small ships, and Chester, I'm going to pick on you for that. Uh, if you don't mind, can you talk about the Sentinel as a, a support ship pick, real quick? We've we've seen it fielded now, and it really piques my interest because it's such a niche hull. I'm curious what you think about that as being a, a good pick in a 5v5 setting. You know, I think that, you know, on um, TQ, uh, the Sentinel is like a terrifying ship and people don't know why, but for those of you that don't know, a uh, Sentinel with a single small newt can hit you from like 32, 31 kilometers away. And it's very fast and it has a bonus to how much uh, nuding amount that that small newt does. So the real terror of the Sentinel is the fact that not only do its newt cycle extremely quickly, uh, but it also does a ton of nuding power for a frigate out to 30k, which means that T3 destroyers, other frigate vessels, and Lodgy ships or other ECM or CAF hungry cruisers, if a Sentinel gets on you with three newts, you're done. Like, your ship will no longer function. So for its point cost, it's extremely versatile. It can fit shield or armor, and it also can bring TDs if you really want to kind of try and push a more specific setup. I think that if the Sentinel would have been used more appropriately when Hard Knox was fighting the Shadow Cartel dual Typhoon team, I think that they could have pulled out a victory there. I think that there was some miscoordination between the Confessor and the Sentinel. Otherwise, they should have been able to clean up Ahina and two Inquisitors very, very easily because those Inquisitors with the Sentinel on the grid should not have been able to rep anything at all. Um, so in the tournament match, I think it's probably one of the best bang for your bucks as far as points are concerned. That's uh, it's a really good point. And again, I, I think even if I can in interject with my own opinion, I think in a 5v5, that ship is even more potent potentially than in a 12v12 setting. But obviously very pilot dependent, and uh, it is a little bit of a gamble in terms of the uh, the tracking disruptor bonuses. So. That being said, we've seen a lot of armor comps, not as many shield comps. Obviously, we saw shield comps banned out before going into uh, this weekend series. But uh, Apophany, why are we seeing so much armor on the field as opposed to shield? I mean, I think it's a difficult call. I mean, I don't think that there's something that says, oh, armor is obviously better than shield because. I think that armor has that advantage of being potential to have that small sig. 
you don't have those shield modules so against missile comps against you know long range turret comps it can be very easy to mitigate damage if you're flying armor it also leaves you a lot of spare mids for extra tackle utility e war so i think armor definitely has its advantages there um with regards to shield typically shield will allow you to be faster and have a lot more dps but in this small arena with the projection available to the ships especially with the bonus the the roll bonus that bcs have just gotten i think the projection and the t3ds for armor tackle are so fast in speed mode that armor has kind of crept up on shields niche and is kind of contending for that as well as having its other advantages yeah, that's interesting. I mean, obviously, as you said, the mid slots being free uh, for armor comps means you can exert that control, like the Vigilant Webs, which definitely played a role in that match where they did in the match prior. Um, it, it's it's hard to decide. I mean, a lot of people would, would be attracted to that paper DPS of a shield comp where you can put so many damage mods in the lows, but we saw uh, a lot of right, uh, rapid light missile setups, uh, presumably rapid light missile setups like Orthrus, Cerberus, those sort of things banned out. So uh, armor seems to be the flavor of the day thus far. And um, I, I think that's been a lot of fun to watch, actually, because sometimes the use of those control mods can be more interesting to see play out than just the damage of, of a shield hull. Uh, sticking true to my word, uh, we are a little bit out from uh, the next match, so I'm going to continue to check my Twitter feed and continue to ask questions. Uh, brief break from valid, legitimate feedback uh, to mention that at Thermal Damage has tweeted me, what is your favorite favorite damage type? Um, probably Kinetic. And I, I don't say that out of spite, Thermal Damage, but uh, God bless you and what you do. Uh, Naiden says, okay, I won't read that one. Uh, Bobon at, at Bobon Eve says, do you think Shadow Cartel should bring a Punisher to punish HK? Uh, probably not. Uh, potentially copyright infringement to have the, uh, the Punisher show up, but, uh, the ship type maybe. Possible good support ship. Um, so, since we've broken a little bit from the, the in-depth analysis of that specific match, uh, let's talk about Eve and T, and let's talk about some other Eve meetups. A lot of people actually have asked uh, throughout the day and, and checking with the other participants in this whole project, uh, which of you guys are going to be at the uh, next NT meetup? Anybody? I'll be there. I'll be there. Okay, I'll you be being there. there is a bit of a prerequisite, <laughs> if, we're, if we're honest, Nash. A little bit of a cheating question, but um, if I could really quickly, and Nash, not that your opinion I'm is I'm actually in the air, actually. My wife, my wife is due like a week after. <laughs> No, oh, wow. She's going to give birth live at Even Tea. That's going to be the content. <laughs> and we will talk to Twitch about getting that cleared for broadcast, I'm sure. But uh, to any of you other guys who have attended Inti, uh what do you have to say about the event? Who, who are you asking? I think whichever well, one in this channel was there. I, I'm not familiar enough with, uh, with the last meetup. I'm not sure which guys made it and which didn't. Unfortunately, I couldn't make it, but I wanted to. But I guess, Nash, if, if nobody else, just break down. Uh, sure. Do you guys have anything planned for next NT or, or sort of uh, how has it been? Yeah, um, we've had uh, various chats about what to do for the next one. And um, uh, actually, I went to Eve Amsterdam, um, organized by uh, Deirdre Val and uh, Bobmon from Eve News 24. And uh, there was a very interesting talk by a German chap from G Fleet um, who explained um, in depth and uh, with a lot of uh, German precision and efficiency <laughs> how to organize events. And it was a very interesting talk. And um, I, some of the advice w will be very German efficiency orientated in the fact that they say, you know, take a, a good year to to plan these kind of things if you're going to have 200 plus people. And um, uh, he's probably right. Uh, like we shoot from the hip a little bit more and, and uh, cram more work into a shorter space of time. So uh, we've tried to avoid thinking about it, uh, but I've had a lot of people already ask me for tickets and when the next one is. And I've even had people book tickets before I even confirmed the date, um, which is uh, like no pressure. Do you know what I mean? Jesus. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, we've actually... <laughs> We've actually put the thread up, and the thread's up, and the tickets are technically live, and I've already sold 11 tickets, and I don't even know what I'm doing yet, so I, I really appreciate 
all the support these people are giving us uh, in terms of making this happen and um, uh, you know wanting to be part of it and wanting to be there that's that's really really good in terms of content uh, what I can say is we will have the addition of a pub crawl uh, so there's going to be additional content on the Friday we're going to have uh, whoever turns up split into five groups we're going to go to uh, four or five different pubs and get drunk really so we're good at that uh, and then um, on the Saturday we have various bits of content again so we will have contributions from CCP uh, which will be some form of Valkyrie we don't know what just yet but it's been worked on um, we will do a tournament uh, of some sort uh, again not quite decided on the details just yet uh, it largely relates to how much time uh, Bay is willing to spend on it and uh, you know obviously uh, We'll work on something on like that. Um, other content will be organized, but the truth is, I uh, I simply don't know just yet. <laughs> well, duly noted, uh, I'm putting it on my list in 2015. Hit a couple of EVE meetups. I'm looking to make my own, but uh, EVE Notting Him is toward the top of the list. Right behind You should Fantas. be there, man. You should be there. I EVE, think EVE uh, team will be a thing for me. Uh, I'm just uh, having a quick poke at bacon. Uh, I think the teams might be uh, might be pretty close here. Uh, yeah, we've got a few minutes, sir. Uh, uh, if you want to chat about the Amar tournament. Good yeah, chat. absolutely. I was wanting to open that. And uh, again, our teams are ready. Really, really nice job by both teams to be prompt and on time. We really appreciate that. A lot of effort went into this. And even though it's a, a tournament about fun and about uh, sort of small gang settings, it's a huge amount of effort. And these guys have been on point all day. Um, so with that being said, we have we do have a few minutes that I'm going to abuse with regards to the Eve tournament. And as opposed to me talking about it, uh, I'd like to hear Elise Randolph tell us more about uh, what's going on in Amar politics and what's coming up. Oh, the Amar championships are dope. Um, so the Amar championship is a, sort of a, a role play type of uh, alliance tournament. It's um, it's really interesting to get that side of the, the game uh involved it's not something that i was really that big into in my eve career but uh when logi bro sort of made the announcement that uh the it's kind of the minor tournament we always have like a major tournament the alliance tournament, then the minors which is like the the neo previously when he announced that the minors were going to be role play oriented I, I definitely got into it i started reading the lore the chronicles i read some of the uh the eve novels I, I changed my hairdo in game. I got my my Amar jacket to rep my boys. <laughs> I bought some skins and I started to role play. I actually got into a, a little argument with people on the in game forums. Well, uh, and I started a war. In fact, I, I this is the first oh, time wow. Pandemic Legion has declared war on anyone. And some guy was <laughs> throwing some shade, so I just declared war on him, and he got super mad. And. Wow. Uh, and that thread got deleted, unfortunately. Because... And how many how many ships have you lost to burner missions, if I may be so bold? Uh, I have only lost one ship to a burner mission. I ran 280 approximately missions to get my standings up. Uh, it was awful. I was mocked. I'm currently the number one ratter in PL. <laughs> but so I guess talk about the format a little bit. So there's six houses. Uh, okay. How, how much time do I have? I don't have that much time. Let, let me go fast. Um, so uh, the Amar Secession Trials, there are six Amar Houses, and the, in the lore, one gets picked, and then the other five have to kill themselves. So uh, to decide who's going to be the heir, the, uh, this year, the, or who's going to be the Emperor or the Empress, the uh, Amar Houses, each, or each of the six houses pick four, comment, or four uh, champions. Champions duke it out. They pick the best champion. And those champions go to war, and the uh, the last man standing gets to uh, to carry his heir up the hills and be the number one stunner. Uh, it's gonna be Sarum, by the way. Just just so you know. No, Tashmaka. Mm, well, nope, that's not yeah, gonna happen. Yeah. Uh, Listen, I know the last um, the last Sarum Emperor got their ass Lux Contoed, so uh, I don't expect the next one to do any better. All right. Oh. Well. Uh... I think we only have a couple more minutes. We are thankfully ahead of schedule, so uh, we're defying the standard for tournaments thus far. Uh, Definitely. But that tournament... Listen, Squeebles, uh, I mean, yes. if, if you want to, um, I've just been poked by uh, EveBet, and uh, they've given us some more stuff to give away. If, you, if, you, uh, if you've got a good question, uh, if not, I, I can make one up for this one, and then uh, we can do another one after the, after the next match, if you like. I mean, does it need to be Eve-related? Is really my ah my... shit, man. You can do whatever you like. I mean, uh... all right. 
What is the average standing height of an emu? A full mature <sighs> male emu. Yeah, you know it. You know it is the popular I, bipedal just gonna, bird. I'm just going to throw this out there and say, do you happen to be drinking a Snapple right now, and are you reading off of the cap? <laughs> if I, were, I tell you what, if Snapple was alcoholic, I'd be a big fan. Uh, no, but it the, is, Everything's uh, alcoholic if you try hard enough. The average standing height of a male adult emu uh, is the question out there right now, and uh, anybody can type that in chat. I'm not even sure what the right answer is. I just have an interest oh, in my bipedal birds. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going I'm to throw you a question that at least we definitely have an answer to, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I, I like your question. Don't get me wrong. It's... Uh... I love really? Because we'll come, we come, we'll come, back the, we'll come back to the emu question. Yeah. It kind of seems like you don't like my question by the fact that you're <laughs> no, I do. The question, I, look, Ash. look at everybody's like you know. I like everybody's got loads of answers for them. I'm I'm actually interested in the real answer now. I'm into right, birds. Okay. So what? <laughs> all right. Okay. So all right. Get get your little typing fingers ready. Uh, we'll do one more. Uh, so ready to type the answer in Twitch chat. Uh, the question is going to be uh, directly from my floor manager right here. It's going to be the next event T will be event number. What is the number of the next <laughs> event T? You tell me, and uh, we will uh, pick out ten random names and send you a hundred million iskies in Eve bet credit. Very nice. I have a couple I think, of... I think we're ready to go to the match, next match soon. Sorry. I, I have a couple of quick tweets to read just for continuity's sake and then I'll uh, I'll throw it to the guys in the booth. Uh, we are about to go into match four of the best of five. Again, to remind the viewers, Hard Knocks is up one. They have two wins thus far, Shadow Cartel, one win. So if Hard Knocks takes this match, they will have won the series and uh, won this weekend of MT Collides. Uh, in the meantime... Uh, Bob Mont making terrible puns on Eve uh, at thermal damage. Disappointed that I prefer kinetic and several other good questions rolling in, which I'll cover later. So uh, please keep that feedback going for at Eve Sir Squeebles, and I will read out your tweets as much as I can. That being said, we are going into match four, and uh, I believe Elise and Chester are back together. So good luck, guys, and uh, good luck to both teams in match four. Hey guys, welcome back to match number four here at the Eventy Collides. We have Shadow Cartel bringing Double Flycatcher, Scythe, Vulture, Orthrus. It's one of their matches, or one of their setups that I was looking at very, very closely, because I think it's probably one of their strongest. Elise, can you tell me what Hard Knocks brought to counter? Oh, Hard Knocks want to close this out by bringing uh, Navy Harbingers shield tanks with uh, two Harpies and a Scythe. I love this Hard Knocks team. I expected some Brutuxes from them, but you know what? Shield tank, Navy Harbs, I'm I'm a fan. I'm a huge fan. And if so, you look at the so uh, ranges that they warped in at, it's pretty much perfect for what they want to do. Both teams got the uh, essentially the max range that they wanted. Hard Knox was able to throw their logistics uh, way in the back. And uh, Shadow Cartel just are all clumped together. And so they'll be able to work as a cohesive unit. It's going to be really interesting to me to see if it's Scythe uh, or Flycatchers are going to be able to live too long. Match is going to be starting here in just five seconds, and I think opening salvos right away, you know, hard maybe with Pulse Fit is about 50k range, and they're going to have close to uh, 700 DPS with Heated Scorch, so they need to be careful. Yeah, this is going to be quite bloody if it goes down correctly, and we see the match starting just right now. The Navy Harbs actually charging in, not afraid on the, Shadow, or on the Hard Knock side. And, uh, yeah, Hard Knox is going to have to really get in there and get to apply that damage. I think Harpy need to be careful with the Orthrus, which is RLML fit, as it should be. Uh, but right now, everything's looking really great. Scythe of uh, NRSS and sit back on Hard Knox team and hopefully keep up the dual Harp navies as they try to run in and catch something. Yeah, and we can actually see, it may be hard for the people to see at home, but uh, the Hard Knox Harbingers are actually kind of separated by about 15 kilometers uh, Sarek is, is way ahead of his bro, Hoodie Mafia, so we'll see if that, that makes uh, any change whatsoever. 
Yeah, I'm trying to see what they're priming first, and it looks like uh, Grimek in his Orthrus is taking damage, but also in these Flycatchers, you know, they need to be really, really careful here. The Shadow Cartel Scythe, piloted by Chris Elliott, is going to need to stay on top of his game, because two Harbinger Navy issues focusing on a uh, Flycatcher is going to be able to bring it down very fast. Right now, he's doing a heroic job keeping everything up, but... I have to say, Hard Knox is in a looks like to be in a good position here. They've pushed Shadow Cartel up against the edge of the map, and the Shadow Cartel guys are, you know, 97, 98 kilometers away, so they need to start thinking about that border. They have Sarx actually taking quite a lot of damage. He had to treat from his uh, forward position here, and it looks like Hard Knox have decided to do an about face. Instead of shooting those flycatchers, they're going straight for the Orthrus and Gramek, and uh, they're pumping quite a bit of damage in at him. But Sarek, he's a shield tank, Harbinger Navy issue, so... Uh, He's, he's not doing too great here. You know, the thing about the Harb Navy, especially Shield Fit, I fly it fairly frequently on TQ, even with the shield buffer gone, still has a tremendous amount of EHP, especially in the structure, just because of the fact that it is that Navy issue battlecruiser. Uh, this Orthrus right now is just taking an absolute ton of damage. Yeah, the he fact has been that, tackled the by that, these Harpies. The fact that he was ran down and tackled uh, in an Orthrus um, by a Harpy or a Harb Navy is just pathetic. Like, uh, an Orthrus should not be caught this early into the match. Yep, well, he has been caught, but it looks like these um, this Hard Knocks team is having actually a hard time breaking the Orthrus. So we can see Chris Elliott is uh, positioned really well, and he is not tackled. He's got his own little defensive screener with him, and he's perfectly wrapping uh, the Orthrus up. Both teams are, are holding pretty strong. As I they're, say, that Gromek starts going down because obviously yeah, he was they're ASB trying that, fits. but Gromek has that XL ASB, and once those nine charges yeah. are up, there is no way that a single scythe is going to be able to keep him up. You know, Orthrus doesn't have tech to uh, resist, so he's going to be wide open for EM damage, and he's going to start getting chunked. Oh, Anaris, uh, Nari, Nari, whatever. The <laughs> the hard knock scythe has also been caught. He's in very low shields. We we're commenting and saying how great of a pilot he was before, and it uh, looks like he's probably going to go down here, which. I mean, Shadow Cartel have just lost most of their damage in that Orthrus, but if they can kill the uh, Hard Knocks Lodgy, they'll be in, back in it. Maybe. Possibly. At this point, though, with the Orthrus gone and, the Hard no and Shadow Cartel only having a Vulture and two Flycatchers, I just don't think it's enough. These well, the Vulture's babies... got a prop mod fit, so I mean... I know, so at least that's a step up from what we're normally <laughs> used to seeing so far. But both of these Harp Navies are in absolutely perfect health, and they are, oh. I think, going to be very, very content to just go find the Vulture and kill it after they're done getting rid of the Scythe from Chris Elliott, which I think is an excellent play. You know... The yeah, Nariasis that... has done his magic again in the scythe. He's just holding it like 3% uh, shields, just living forever. And Chris Elliott's scythe for the uh, Shadow Cartel side has been tackled by these twin harpies for the yeah. uh, Hard Knock side. Yeah, Hard know, Knock's that... a really balanced team right now. Hard Knock's showing that their piloting is, without a doubt, a large step above what Shadow Cartel is showing today, just because not only is their logistics pilot... Um, uh, Anarisis just head and shoulders above the other Logi pilots. Not only has he consistently shown us in these past four matches being able to stay alive, but he stays alive well beyond the Logi trade. Uh, but that, along with the fact that Shadow Cartel and Gramek uh, dropping the Orthrus so quickly at the start of the match, I mean, you just can't do that when you're flying a ship like that, especially considering he has a scram, so there's just no excuse. Yeah, he does have a bonus to scrams, but uh, these Harpies able to get on it. It's It's really refreshing to see sort of a tackle wing come back into the Alliance tournament. And uh, it's sort of a meta that we've seen when the Alliance tournament had six-man teams and when the Alliance tournament had 12-man teams. A like flycatcher Shadow wings. Cartel is boundaried, as, as, as boundaried as, uh, as oh, well man now. after my so, own heart. Yeah, it's Duma, just you're next, a good some man. next level piloting here. Nice. <laughs> so he's out of the that, um, Yeah, just a referee decision. That does mean that um, the... Um, uh, Shadow Cartel team is disqualified from this match, and Hard Knocks do win the match, even though there's still ships left on the grid. We'll let them play it out, um, because they'll, yeah, it's going to be over anyway. So. The only thing that changed <laughs> yeah. much, that these Harp Navies put out Knocks so much damage, good lord. Yeah, going to be pushing close to 1100 DPS with Conflag and drone flight, uh, with, with I mean, heated Conflag, and that that is scary. Especially yeah, they're using your... EC drones, so they don't have damage drones, but... I mean, Even the Harbinger so. Navy issue was recently balanced um, by CCB, so it gets a 37% tracking bonus. Uh, so it is uh, pretty absurd. 
Yeah. Um, you know, I have to say really strong showing here from Hard Knocks. You know, I wonder if Shadow Cartel is still burnt out from Alliance Tournament or what happened there. But, you know, I was expecting a lot more. Uh, but I have to say Hard Knocks um, looking good, minus that first match where they were a little kind of on the edge. And uh, the one match where I think it was a very difficult fight for them against the Twin Typhoons, their piloting uh, has been, for the most part, um, very, very well played here. Yeah, Hard Knocks, I think they've, uh, overall, obviously, they have some really great setups. I really like the um, sort of direction they went with all their teams. They're quite versatile. But it was their, it all came down to their piloting skill and their decision making and their adaptability on the fly. Like, you see them charge in, say, you know what, this is a bad situation. Let me reevaluate and go go for a new plan. And uh, it worked perfectly for them. And it looks like they're going to be the champions. I mean, they're going to, they'll have dropped one match, but. It's not too shabby. No, when not shabby at all. I have four. to say, uh, Hard Knocks is going to have to be someone to look out for. They've shown us some pretty interesting new setups as far as you know that interesting Vigilant comp, which played out well against the Absolution. But also, I really like this setup they have here with the double harm Navy issues. Um, they have a little bit more fleshed out Lodgy Wing, uh, unlike the double battleship comps that we've seen earlier and i really like how this played out here you know the harm navy is officially shield fit they're very fast they have great projection um and with that tracking bonus man you have to watch out if you are flying a small ship i uh, totally I, I actually and just looking at what hard knocks had left to field they had a double hurricane fleet issue team very similar to this one and a double brudix team with a crew and a punisher like this is this is essentially their meta i, I really like it i think it's very very strong and powerful at, at, and, at um, the end of the, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I think that's it, right? So we're going to have to send it back to the booth with uh, Hard Knocks as the victors for this match and the, the whole shebang. Definitely. Well played. The new high-performance RIG 500 headset from Plantronics is designed to match the skills of an aspiring eSport player with the gear they need to win. The new modular system gives you the power to adapt, upgrade, and personalize your headset for the task at hand. The RIG 500 series of gaming headsets are engineered to deliver the perfect combination of durable lightweight comfort in an immersive audio environment. 7.1 surround sound and 24-bit audio provide a stunning 360-degree sound field with directional audio. 40-millimeter drivers with low-frequency resonators provide crisp highs and boosted bass. Clear voice noise-canceling technology provides clear communication to your teammates. From the headset company that equips the pros, the 500 series was crafted to meet the needs of esports and competitive players around the world. The new RIG 500 series of headsets from Plantronics. Respect the training. Reactions win. And we're back. So, wow, um, that was uh, incredible, actually. I was uh, quite surprised. Uh, interesting ending to that match. Uh, we've got Bay sitting next to me here, chatting to the team captains, which will uh, drag into uh, <laughs> which will which will drag into comms in a minute, and uh, we can ask them some questions. So, if you've uh, got some questions, it might be a good time to throw them into the. Uh, the Twitch channel just now, and uh, we'll get the commentators to uh, tear them to bits and find out what's actually happened. Um, I would like to just uh, take this opportunity to uh, remind everybody of the next uh, lineup in this series. Uh, the next uh, series will be played out. Uh, we would normally do this on the first Sunday of the month, uh, but for various reasons, we've had to delay a couple of the matches already. So um, the one for next month is actually going to be on the 22nd of October. Uh, 
sorry, uh, November, this is obviously in relation to the Amara Championship, which uh, we don't want to uh, collide with. <laughs> See what I did there? Uh, <laughs> Um, so we'll uh, we'll move that over to the 22nd to have a nice clean weekend uh, and a whole month of Eve Sports, which is uh, uh, very exciting. I'm sure I've missed out a couple of bits here, but uh, I am confident that my wonderful co-host, uh, Mr. Sir Squeebles, will remind me of that in a minute. And here I am, his wonderful co-host, Mr. <laughs> at Sir Squeebles. Um, couple of tweets came in mostly puns from at bob on eve you should be ashamed of yourself um also from Niden in a fight between chester sb and batman who wins chester i'm gonna let you answer first and then i'm gonna tell you what the real answer is uh well the real answer uh, i can just get it out of the way right now is definitely gonna be batman um yeah, he's a billionaire he's a billionaire he has a lot of dank items that I don't have. The only thing I have going for me is a quite possibly an indestructible nose, but I don't think that that's going to save me from punches at other places to my body. And for those of you playing the Dank Count game from home, you have just won your first million. Congratulations. Uh, Dank was finally used on the stream. Seriously, though, huge congratulations, first off. For those of you who can clap, I can't, but I can slap myself in the face. Round of applause for both teams uh, for this weekend's tournament. I'm just hitting myself. That sounds no, no. really wrong. Really well, wrong. Well, it wasn't. It was me slapping myself in the face. Um, so congratulations to both teams. A really, really good series of five. Uh, obviously, we only made it to match four, and uh, Hard Knocks did win that fourth match, giving them three wins in the series. Um, Navy Harbinger's coming out. Not a whole lot of shield comps having been fielded today. That one was one of my favorites from early on. Navy Harbinger has so much potential. So um, first and foremost, Chester, where... How does the DPS core of that Navy Harbinger comp from Hard Knocks differ from some of the other comps we've seen today? Oh, well, it just comes in from raw application. You know, with high tracking Scorch Guns, uh, along with the range that you can put out if you properly fit with Locust, you're looking at, you know, close to like 46 to 47k optimal plus 7k fall off. And you know that's that's extremely deadly there is no way that if you're using an end of ud to properly help mitigate some of your transversal issues that ships are going to be able to easily get under your tracking and even if they do get there the harp navy has enough med slots for a web at least and it's going to be very difficult to kill those ships yeah i thought that was uh, really really awesome to see that comp out i really think that was one of their stronger comps truth be told um elise Tell me a little bit about, uh, Chester has alluded to application being important there. Um, we've seen a lot of armor comps that we've not seen a huge amount of range, honestly. Is, is range exclusive to shield comps, or is it something you can achieve with armor as well? Um, you can do it with armor. As well. uh, with armor, we saw the Shadow Cartel team try to flirt with this uh, with their Absolution and Confessor team. Their Abso was beam fit. Um, I don't know. You tend to, you tend to need a lot of slots. Uh, and you kind of need to have a fair amount of speed, so it's something that's more conducive to uh, to shield tanks. So you can use those lows to to enhance your tracking, to sort of enhance your speed and maneuverability. And um, as we were looking in this team, like the Harbinger Navy issue, it's hard to to see on EFT when you try and do the theory crafting. But one of the biggest bonuses it gets, uh, one of the strongest bonuses any ship can get, is a tracking bonus. And um, with Scorch, which is also kind of, I'd say, borderline broken for ammo. Obviously, it's not like game-breakingly broken, but it's incredibly strong as ammo. So uh, these Harb Navies can apply like their full DPS, their full EFT DPS uh, from 0 to 40 kilometers. And that just makes them incredibly, incredibly scary in a format like this. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was uh, we haven't seen as many... Well, that's not true. I mean, battle cruisers obviously are popular as a whole, both in Tech One faction and Tech Two varieties. But Apotney, looking at all seven comps, including the band compositions from both teams, um, do any of the the battle cruiser sized hulls, again Tech Two included, strike you as being really, really potent in the teams that these guys have chosen? Um, I feel like the battle cruiser hulls in general uh, are in danger from the battleship comps, as is natural, you know, I think, like, the Typhi comps it would be dangerous to them. But yeah, I think the Brutix Navy is a super interesting one. If you uh, hull tank it, it has so much raw buffer, so even if you can't overwhelm it with 
DPS, you can't overwhelm reps if it goes armor tank or if it goes shield tank. You can put damage control, three um, hull upgrades, and then rigs for the hull upgrades, and you're getting over 100k HP. And it doesn't matter whether you've got reps or not, that's going to take a while to burn through. And one of the key things in the Alliance tournament settings, or the EVENT settings as we're in here, is if you die slowly, you are doing a huge service to your team. Yeah, I, I really look forward to the evolution of that. I think you're absolutely right in that uh, you're you're putting sort of battleship bait out, but we've only seen one battleship top-heavy comp uh, come out today with those Typhoon fleet issues. So really excited to see uh, those players who who min max and can squeeze as much as possible out of something that's a little more higher SP geared like a command ship. I think that's going to be huge moving forward, and I'm really excited to hear uh, some other people's opinions about those comps. Uh, obviously, the Navy Harbingers today, Faction PC Hall, really well executed, and I think that was an awesome platform for uh, teams in the upcoming weekends in this season. A um, uh, couple more things, I mean, to throw out there about that match and specifically, but really more uh, the teams as a whole. How do you come back from a, a disadvantage, Suetonia? If, if you're looking, say, Suetonia, you're the team captain for Shadow Cartel, uh, assuming that they have somebody uh, at the helm. What do you do if you're if you're back one series? Uh, we've talked about picking your strongest comp going into the finals, so to speak. But what do you do early to set yourself up for success in that that clutch moment? Do you do you try and bait out their their stronger comps, or what is there that can be done on a meta perspective to position yourself well when it does come down to that potential two wins versus two wins? Well, if you have a, some setups that are maybe. Uh maybe not so good general, but are more sort of specific counters. When your opponent has less setups, it's a lot less risky to field those counters. Right, and, and so that obviously would, would require you putting that same forethought into your bands, correct? Yeah, uh, obviously you're going to ban the two setups that are going to bring the most uh, trouble to your team. But you can also have maybe, uh, you know, you, you can look at your setup and say, well, this setup is going to be really strong against these two setups. And uh, if, if those setups are still in the pool and you have that setup, then you have a good chance of winning a match. Right. So we obviously have to get into uh, talking to the team captains. They've been kind enough to join us for a little bit of discussion following the match. Um, I We have right now Grim Cave from Shadow Cartel. We have Lysis and Hoodie Mafia, both from Hard Knock Citizens. Or I'm just going to say Hard Knocks, actually. Uh, the Citizens might be too much. Um, first off, do you guys just want to introduce sort of your history a as a group together in, in context of either your alliance and other tournaments or, or just in this tournament specifically? We'll start with uh, Grim K from Shadow Cartel. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm actually, I've, I've had a really good time doing this tournament all in all. It's been a little bit crazy because, as a lot of you know, like, Losec has been big headlines with snuff versus shadow cartel and all that jazz so it's been like kind of a balance where not only are we dealing with even t but we're dealing with all the other battles that we have to do all the time and uh it's it's really fun just to kind of balance everything and see like it, getting practices sorted and having everything done while meanwhile stuff is getting reinforced and done so it was really really kind of a fun balance to do on that um but as far as it goes like uh, I actually have been in an alliance tournament with Shadow Cartel this past time, and we kind of wanted to give US time zone more of a focus this time around for letting people play that maybe couldn't get in on EU time zone in the alliance tournament. So we had a completely different set of guys playing uh, in the even T, and it was really a lot of fun. Um, overall, letting them to have the opportunity, whereas like it, they can't do it normally since they're US time zone based versus EU time zone based and practices and all that. So it's been it's it's been really nice. Awesome. Glad to hear that. Um, definitely interesting that you guys have a, a slightly different crew going in this tournament. I think that's really cool. Shadow Cartel, obviously, you guys have a fairly deep roster to draw from of uh, pilots with the right experience and enthusiasm to get involved with in that. So well done today. Uh, I'm going to hand it over to, uh, let's start with Hoodie. Uh, if you just want to go over quickly who Heart Knox is and uh, your tournament experience and, and very briefly how this uh, weekend has gone for you guys. Sure thing, sure thing. Uh, Hard Knocks is a, is a Wormel corporation. We live in the NSC5 Wormel. Uh, we've been there for a long, long time. I've been personally with Hard Knocks for, for about a year. Um, 
And as regards to our tournament experience, I think we actually started out this year. Um, we've had a bunch of people that have already like played tournaments before, but this was really like this year was our AT debut. We kind of started practicing uh, quite early. And the remnants of what actually was the AT team are kind of still here. And, and those are the guys that we, we play today with as well. We lost some people since uh, after having practiced for four to six months, there are some people that are just burned out entirely of, of having to log on to CC three or four times a week. Uh, but the core is still here. So we thought it was a good opportunity to go on with that core and uh, to see how far we could go in even T. And uh, it's, it's been a blast for us so far. And uh, obviously, Lysis, sorry that you have to follow in those footsteps because a lot of good things said there. But uh, what about uh, your experience so far with uh, Antique Lights? Uh, awesome, because uh, I've been playing this game for quite some time, and I'm sure uh, Hoodie could agree that you need to find something that keeps you interested. And for me, it's uh, just the tournaments. That's uh, for me when I was starting out playing, you know, when I saw tournaments, I thought, oh, man, these guys must be the most elite pilots in the game. Of course, you know, as years goes by, you start learning the game and you look for new things. And I admit, for probably the past five years has been my sole focus when it came to my EVE gameplay. And I found a good group who uh, share the same views as I do. All right, so this is a question I've been wanting to ask both teams. Uh since I very first understood that we were following the Collide setup. Um, Grim K, if you're comfortable answering on, on behalf of the team, what was the setup that you looked at on the Hard Knock side and said, no, we're, we're not going to fight this? I mean, looking at all the Hard Knock comps, I didn't really want to fight the Orthrus comp for one reason. Um, all their other comps were turret-based and uh, were not really... You know, it, it's more easy to counter sort of thing, whereas the Orthrus is missile-based, so anything that we did to hard counter all their other comps, we couldn't really do with the Orthrus. So we knew that we wanted that one out from the get-go, and uh, just led to an easy ban choice on that. And uh, same question, uh, Lysis, what did you guys see immediately that you just instinctively knew you did not want to see Shadow Cartel putting on the field? Slapners, uh, the Slapners for sure, that comp. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. didn't want to deal with that. We knew that our comp that was similar to that was going to get banned out, and uh, we knew that that was a hard counter and a lot of DPS. So that's something we didn't want to deal with. Yeah, fair enough. I, I think uh, anybody who's followed uh, sort of the tournament culture view for a long time looks at a Slapner and immediately has to assess what they can do about it. So that ban made perfect sense to me. Um, I, I don't want to pry into what you guys think your, is your strongest setup and why. I feel like that's that maybe puts you at a slight disadvantage moving forward. But um, is there any ships uh, that you guys are willing to say either underperformed or overperformed on your team? Uh, uh, piloting aside, anything that you learned from this weekend about what you expect to see in the tournament moving forward that you, you feel like doesn't jeopardize maybe your, your own theory crafting? Yeah, I, I got something. Um, let's say Typhoon Fleet issues. I think they're they're very good good ship for us. Um, it's kind of a bit of a funny story behind it. Uh, I'll try to keep it short. Of course, if you've watched their AT run, you see you could have seen that we use them extensively, and we we love those things. I mean, we think we're one of the best ships in the game for for their uh, their role. And seeing them on the roster of Shadow Cartel and not having them ourselves, we instinctively kind of had this oh shit Typhoon Fleet issues um, coming at us. And we kind of pulled back from it and said, you know what, but they don't have links here, they don't have a lot of application, we can maybe kind of get away with not banning them and just, just facing them. Um, maybe a mistake. That's definitely something that uh, they performed a lot better than we expected them uh, to do today. Yeah, I mean, uh, it was sort of a unique listing uh, among the roster of teams. I mean, total 14 comps, obviously, again, four banned across both teams. Um, but the Typhoon Fleet issue really smacks of uh, sort of bigger compositions and 12-man compositions where you have more points to move around. So it was exciting to see those, and it, I, I think it was thought-provoking for a lot of us that uh, were more thinking about uh, more evenly distributed comps. Uh, I really enjoyed that as a non-participant in the tournament, seeing how that uh, that battleship comp played out. Um, any advice that you're willing to offer not necessarily to other teams competing because you know forget those guys let them fend for themselves but to guys who are watching at home ladies um what do you have to say about the the tournament culture especially in this 5v5 setting where arguably it's it's 
a little bit less intense in that you have to have less people online at any given time. How do you guys feel about this this tournament culture extending beyond the major CCP tournaments? And um, do you think it's approachable for a group that doesn't have that alliance tournament experience to do something like what you all did today? I mean, I'll kind of go in from this. I started EVE less than two years ago, and I've been playing ever since. And I've had a lot of fun getting into the tournament environment. And basically, like, I've had... It's just been whatever you want to do, you can do, honestly. And you've, and it, it's it's really encouraging to see, like, people that get in and try and get into the tournament setting. But, um, I mean, the whole the culture around tournament setting is just a lot of who you know sort of thing. And, like, you know, whether you get your name out there and who, who trusts you to fly with them. Because it is kind of hard um, as far as once you get in with a group trusting and everything like that because there's so many there's such a meta with spying and stuff like that that you always have to wonder who's out there but then i mean of course you're going to have people that are elitist in the alliance tournament and just they've been doing it for a really long time they know what they're doing they know their stuff and it, it's just you'll get pretty much all different cultures but honestly anybody that wants to do the tournament setting i'd encourage to do it and try it it's one of the most fun i've ever had in eve personally Awesome. Uh, Hoodie has actually said something in text they might not have wanted to say out loud, but uh, please, please say that, Hoodie. Tell, tell I'm, us I'm more all good with this. I'm all good with this because I'm going to plug something and you're giving me a really good like lead up to this. Um, now, someone in chat asked a uh, question, question from Twitch. Uh, I want to know what the teams do under pressure comms wise. And my response was, as a funny joke, it said, it's mostly me screaming. Um, which is part of a joke and it's partly true because um, we will be releasing uh, our AT video in uh, probably one or two weeks, and there will be comms on there as well, and you'll get to hear a bit of that if you're interested in uh, what we do under pressure. Yeah, and as far as our comms, pretty much the whole time we were, we were mostly communicating. I mean, that's kind of the key and stuff like this where everybody's talking, and it's completely different than TQ fleets where only the FC is talking and blah, blah, blah. But whenever you're doing Alliance tournament, everyone's communicating, everyone's letting you know what's going on in each nature, so it's a completely different dynamic as far as fleet comms go. But yeah, there's a lot of pressure in the yeah. entire environment. Absolutely. Well, uh, first off, I mean, thank you guys so much for participating. And then on top of all the effort that you put in coming on and hanging out with us, I really appreciate it. Um, so congratulations to, to both teams. Obviously, Hard Knocks, great job this weekend. The, the season still has a lot to go. Um, but congratulations to you guys. Skins will be going to both teams. I'll leave, uh, I'll leave that to Nash to talk about the prize structure. But um, just real quick, I want to review uh, Hoodie Mafia and Lysis, both from Hard Knocks, are on here taking time to talk to us, and Grim K from Shadow Cartel. So thank you guys so, so much, uh, and good luck to you guys in future tournament settings. Um, I also want to give a quick shout-out to the other guys who are commentating alongside me. Um, obviously, we have the support staff, and Nash uh, knows them better than most, given that he's sweating uh, with a couple of them there in the booth. But uh, Apothne from Pandemic Legion, myself, Sir Squeebles from We Heard Initiative, Chesser, uh, who didn't include a tag. I won't assign you to anybody. You're, you're your own man, Chesser. Um, <laughs> Elise Randolph, Pandemic Legion, and uh, Suetonia, who just owns people in wormholes constantly. Um, thank you to all of those commentators uh, on my behalf. It's been a, a ton of fun to work with you guys. And uh, with that, I have to hand it back to the man with all the power, Nash, to uh, sort of wrap <laughs> us up here. Wow, no pressure. Yeah, listen, thank you so much, um, uh, Mr. Sarah Squeebles. You've been an absolute legend. You've been, you've been so good today, and uh, thanks for keeping everything together uh, and, and uh, you know, making this all possible with us. Um, so... I'm going to do all the boring bits like uh, I always get to do. Um, I, I, I do mean this from the bottom of my heart. Uh, I want to thank everybody uh, that's been part of the team and uh, um, uh, everybody that's uh, you know helped us out getting to this point uh, and, and helps produce us uh, this, this particular show. So tonight on comms we have uh, about 10 guys uh, and this ranges from uh, people helping out with marketing, people helping out with graphics, um, um, and the bear is pushing me to talk quicker. Jesus Christ, sometimes I talk too quick and sometimes I don't qu talk quick enough. I can't fucking win. Jesus Christ, like, you know, where's the... You know, he likes to put pressure on me, I think. Um, yeah, I just wanted to thank everybody. I want to thank all the commentators, uh, uh, which will be rotating over the next couple of uh, series that we've got. Uh, don't forget, on the 22nd of November, we've got our uh, second full broadcast. Um, you'll have us in uh, HQ again. Uh, we've got a couple of different commentators. We've got uh, Sir Squeebles as our fantastic 
fantastic co-host again. Uh, we'll have a special guest in CCP Fuzzy next time. So make sure if you uh, if you want to hear uh, a little bit about this man and uh, hear from him that you uh, uh, log in for that. Uh, I want to thank uh, all our sponsors. Um, so all the sponsors that have uh, helped us out in making this possible. We've got uh, Plantronics. Um, we've got Cooler Master. We've got CCP themselves. And of course, Evebet. Uh, who've been in a massive, uh, you know, help and support. Um, um, we, uh, what else have we got? Uh, the competitors themselves. I want to thank the competitors. Uh, you know, despite uh, Sharkatel going out of the tournament, uh, I, I do want to thank them very much for their participation and uh, taking this uh, as serious as everybody else. Uh, they don't go home empty-handed, uh, indeed, uh, which is one of the questions I've been asked today. Um, uh, the prizes. <clears throat> so... Um, CCP have handed us uh, 150 unique skins. Uh, so despite these uh, skins not having any additional attributes, these are unique items. Um, we have no more details what they're going to look like, but hopefully over the next couple of months we'll be able to reveal a little bit more. And you'll hear it here first. Um, these skins uh, are indeed limited and therefore very valuable. Uh, and uh, um, this guy's got a butt bust to catch. He wants me to fucking hurry up now. Jesus. Uh, Shadow Cattell will walk away with 10 of these skins. Um, obviously, Hard Knocks uh, going on to the next match. We'll walk away with a little bit more. Um, but, uh, yeah. You'll get some more information about that soon. Uh, last but not least, uh, before we go out, uh, Sir Squeebles himself will be continuing on, on his own stream very shortly. Uh, he'll be doing a little roam, I believe. Uh, but uh, I need uh, to ask you to switch over to his... Uh, Twitch channel and check out what he's up to next. Uh, and with that, ladies and gentlemen, we will see you on the 22nd of next month.